Hi everyone. In this talk, we'll present a Monte Carlo method to solve partial differential equations with spatially varying coefficients. Models in science and engineering often have way more complexity in their geometry and materials than what conventional PDE solvers can handle. But imagine if simulation was like Monte Carlo rendering. Just load up a complex model and hit go without worrying about meshing or basis functions. Our paper takes a major step towards this vision by building a bridge between PDEs and volume rendering. Here's an example, heat radiating of infinitely many black body emitters, each with super detailed geometry and material coefficients. From this view alone, the boundary meshes have about 600 million vertices. Now, to get the same level of detail with a conventional PDE solver, such as the finite element method, we need about 8.5 million tetrahedra and two and a half hours of meshing time, even on a tiny piece of the scene. But with Monte Carlo, we get rapid feedback that can be progressively refined. At this moment, experts might point to the boundary element method and meshless FEM. The short story here is that these methods either lack support for variable coefficients, or they still must do expensive and error-prone node placement and global solves. Our journey with Monte Carlo began a few years ago, when we realized that rendering techniques from computer graphics could be used to turbocharge Muller's walk on spheres algorithm for solving PDEs. In this paper, we make the connection between rendering and simulation even stronger by linking and applying tools from volume rendering to PDEs with variable coefficients. Spatially varying coefficients are essential for capturing rich material properties. For instance, to understand the thermal performance of a building, note that even a basic wall isn't just a homogeneous slab. It has many layers with different density. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. PDEs with variable coefficients are everywhere in science and engineering from thermal and structural analysis to biomolecular and geological modeling. A major challenge with any PDE solver is spatial discretization. This process is expensive and error-prone, especially for complex geometric models. Apart from its massive cost, discretization also causes two major headaches for solving PDEs. Important geometric features often get destroyed, and significant mesh refinement can be needed to remove aliasing artifacts in the PDE solution, boundary conditions, and coefficients. To avoid these problems, photorealistic rendering moved away from meshing to Monte Carlo methods, which only need pointwise access to the geometry via ray intersection queries. This enables simulation of intricate light transport phenomena on complex geometric models. So what about PDEs? Here, there's a little-known algorithm called walk-on spheres, which avoids spatial discretization altogether. Much like rendering, it only needs access to a single geometric kernel, namely closest point queries. Now, to be candid, walk-on spheres is way behind mature technology like FEM. Especially in computer graphics, we've seen amazing PDE solvers that handle complex multi-physics scenarios. But the walk-on spheres idea and its promise to free us from the bonds of spatial discretization is just so appealing that we want to extend it to a broader class of PDEs. So let's talk about how we can ex extend walk-on spheres to variable coefficient problems. This story really is a tale of three kinds of equations, PDEs, integral equations, and stochastic differential equations. Our paper provides a playbook to convert between these different forms. In precise terms, our goal is to develop a Monte Carlo method that solves second-order linear elliptic equations with spatially varying diffusion, drift, and absorption coefficients. So let's unpack this equation term by term. First, a Laplace equation describes the steady state temperature inside a domain if heat is fixed to some given function g on the boundary. Adding a source term f yields a Poisson equation where f describes a background temperature. Imagine heat being pumped into the domain at a rate f at each point x. We can control the rate of heat diffusion by replacing the Laplacian with the operator grad of alpha grad u, where alpha is a scalar function. Physically, alpha might describe the thickness or varying composition of a material. Adding a drift term omega grad u to a Poisson equation indicates that heat is being pushed along some vector field omega. Imagine a flowing river which mixes hot water into cold water until it reaches a steady state. Finally, an absorption term sigma u acts like a background medium that absorbs heat. Think about a heat sink or a cold engine block. The function sigma describes the strength of absorption at each point x. 
Now, there are lots of other terms you could add to a PDE, but these already get you pretty far. And more importantly, these are the terms that we'll be able to convert into integral representations, which ultimately lead to Monte Carlo algorithms for PDEs. So let's see how. The solution to basic PDEs can be expressed via integral equations. So for example, the solution to a Laplace equation is given by the mean value property, which says that the solution at a point x equals the average value over any empty ball centered at x. This integral is recursive. Unknown values of u at x depend on unknown values at y. Now this sounds like a conundrum, but actually this is exactly how walk on spheres works. Recursively estimate the value of u till we reach the boundary and then grab the known boundary value. As with PDEs, we can keep adding terms to integral equations to capture additional behavior. So for instance, there's a nice integral representation for the screen Poisson equation, as long as the absorption coefficient sigma is constant. From an algorithmic perspective, walk on spheres now also picks a random point inside each ball in the walk to sample the source term. Finally, we can describe the same phenomena using stochastic differential equations. For us, the stochastic picture is actually super important because it lets us deal with spatially varying coefficients. An ODE describes the location of a particle in terms of its derivatives in time. For instance, dx omega dt says that a particle's velocity is given by some vector field omega. For example, a speck of dust blowing in the wind. A stochastic differential equation describes random motions. A key example here is Brownian motion, where changes in position follow a Gaussian distribution and are independent of past events. Brownian motion is often used to model everything from moving molecules to fluctuations in stock prices. Adding Brownian motion to our earlier ODE gives a more general diffusion process, which we can think of as either a deterministic particle with noise or a random walk with drift. We can also modulate the strength of jiggling via a function alpha. As alpha increases, things heat up and particles move faster. Finally, we can think about a random walker possibly getting absorbed in a background medium, like ink getting soaked up in a sponge. Here, sigma denotes the strength of absorption. It doesn't show up in the SDE itself, but it will be incorporated in just a moment. Now, it's no coincidence that we use the same symbols alpha, sigma, and omega for both our PDE and SDEs. These perspectives are linked by the feynman katz formula, which gives the solution to our main PDE as an expectation over many random walks. A special case of feynman katz is Kakutani's principle, which says that the solution to a Laplace equation is just the average value seen by a Brownian random walker when it first hits the boundary. When restricted to a ball, Kakutani's principle is actually equivalent to the mean value property due to the rotational symmetry of Brownian motion. Walk on spheres can therefore be seen as an acceleration strategy for simulating Brownian motion. More importantly, unlike classic integral equations, the Feynman Katz formula handles spatially varying coefficients. As a result, we can use it to build a new recursive but deterministic integral equation, which in turn leads to modified walk on spheres algorithms for solving variable coefficient PDEs. So, the key observation behind our method is that even though walk-on spheres cannot directly handle PDEs with variable coefficients, it can still be used to solve problems with spatially varying source terms. We therefore apply a series of transformations that convert our original heterogeneous PDE into a constant coefficient screen Poisson equation with a recursive source term. From an FEM perspective, it might feel like we haven't done anything useful. We just shuffled all the hard stuff to the other side of the equal sign. Yet, from a Monte Carlo perspective, we now have a way forward, since we can recursively estimate the resulting deterministic integral. On the stochastic front, our first transformation rewrites the feynman katz formula purely in terms of Brownian motion instead of a diffusion process. As part of this transformation, all the original coefficients get converted into a single variable absorption coefficient sigma. Now, to get rid of this sigma, we then observe that the feynman katz formula actually looks a lot like the volume rendering equation, which in computer graphics describes the radiance L along a ray in a heterogeneous medium that absorbs, scatters, and emits radiation. But if for just a second we put aside the physical meaning of all of these symbols, then structurally, the main difference between feynman katz and the VRE is that one requires simulation of Brownian random walks, 
while the other provides the radiance a longer ray. And as a result, transformations like delta tracking used in computer graphics to solve the VRE can be applied to the feynman katz formula as well. So here we basically move the variable coefficient sigma to a, to a recursively defined source term f as in the PDE setting. Sigma bar is a free parameter, which we set to be the difference between the maximal values of sigma over the entire domain. Now, just as in volume rendering, we've essentially turned our digital heterogeneous medium into an equivalent homogeneous one. Algorithmically, this is really interesting because PDEs can now suddenly benefit from decades worth of volume rendering research. In particular, these transformations allow us to develop modified versions of walk-on spheres with direct counterparts in volume rendering. So for instance, the delta tracking version shown here on the left uses the concept of null events from volume rendering to sample points either inside or on the boundary of a ball. Similarly, the next flight version always jumps to a random point on the largest sphere using off-centered walks. And conceptually, it looks a lot like the next flight algorithm from volume rendering. In practice, we find that while the next flight version often requires fewer distance queries compared to delta tracking, it usually suffers from higher correlation. Both algorithms also share the variance and runtime performance characteristics of their volume rendering counterparts. Finally, on problems with high frequency coefficients, standard variance reduction techniques in Monte Carlo rendering, such as Russian roulette and splitting, provide similarly dramatic improvements for our algorithm, here providing a 6x speedup. Runtime performance also improves in this case, since walks are often terminated early. From an implementation perspective, a PDE is encoded by the description of the scene geometry, boundary conditions, source term, and coefficients. In our implementation, this data is provided via callback routines that return a value for any query point in the domain. Closest point queries can be accelerated via standard spatial hierarchies, such as a BVH, for a wide variety of scene representations. Unlike mesh generation, a BVH uses little memory and can be built quickly even for detailed models. Also, unlike a bad mesh, a poorly constructed BVH only harms performance, not correctness or accuracy. Our approach is ideal for interactive editing since it operates directly on the original scene representation and provides instant feedback after updates to the geometry, boundary conditions, and PDE coefficients. Unlike conventional solvers, our approach doesn't require any geometric preprocessing, which allows it to scale to extremely large scenes. In contrast, a significant issue with traditional numerical methods such as FEM is the end-to-end -end cost of the pipeline. Even if the FEM solve is fast, one first has to convert the boundary description into a high-quality simulation mesh. This MOS process can be pretty brittle and slow, and requires a lot of careful consideration because even a single bad quality element can throw off the accuracy of an FEM solution completely. Some conventional PDE solvers, such as the boundary element method, don't need to mesh the domain at all. However, BEM can't handle problems with source terms or spatially varying coefficients on the domain interior. To include these terms, it has to be coupled with a second solver such as FEM, which requires volumetric meshing. Meshless FEM methods such as moving these squares don't require any meshing either. However, unlike Monte Carlo, these methods still require a dense and careful sampling of the entire domain. They also need to solve large global systems of equations that are typically a lot bigger compared to FEM. The bigger problem with meshless methods is that they're unreliable. Here we solve a standard PDE on all models in the Tengi Tenge dataset and plot the error under refinement. As indicated by the crosses in the plot, common meshless schemes often fail to converge under refinement, while even state-of-the-art approaches often show extremely large variations in error. In contrast, walk-on spheres demonstrates very predictable convergence on all 10,000 models in the same dataset. Like standard walk-on spheres, the only parameter in our algorithm is an epsilon tolerance that indicates how close to the boundary you have to be before you can grab the known boundary value. This tolerance introduces minimal bias and has little impact on performance unlike tolerances in meshing algorithms. Like ray marching, Feynman cats can be directly approximated by simulating a diffusion process using explicit time stepping. Unlike walk-on spheres, however, discretized random walks can leave the domain, which biases the solution estimates. Now, smaller time steps can help reduce this bias, but at significant detriment to runtime performance. 
An extra benefit of Monte Carlo is that it decouples the boundary conditions and coefficients from the geometry. As a result, there's never any spatial aliasing in the solution, and walk on spheres is able to capture the global profile of the solution with just a few walks. Now in contrast, conventional solvers have to heavily refine the discretization to capture high frequency inputs. And in general, it's very difficult to predict an adequate mesh size ahead of time. Though our main goal here is to develop core knowledge, there are already some cool things we can do. One is to simply solve physical PDEs with complex geometry and coefficients. A graphics example is to generalize so-called diffusion curves to variable coefficients, giving more control over how sharp or fuzzy details look. Another nice point of view is that variable coefficients on a flat domain can actually be used to model constant coefficients on a curved domain. This way, we can solve PDEs with intricate boundary data on smooth surfaces without any meshing at all. A Monte Carlo method also makes it easy to integrate PDE solvers with physically-based renderers. For instance, we can get way more accurate diffusion approximations of heterogeneous subsurface scattering without having to painfully hook up an FEM or grid-based solver. Our method isn't without limitations. As in rendering, coefficients with large spatial variations can lead to increased variance. Adapting further techniques from volume rendering, such as local coefficient bounds, low variance VRE estimators, and adaptive weight windows should help address this issue. More broadly, the walk on spheres framework still lacks support for many basic features of schemes like FEM, such as Neumann boundary conditions and anisotropic diffusion coefficients. Now that said, this framework is still a fairly new way to solve PDEs, with deep but unexplored connections to rendering. Moreover, since Monte Carlo methods are free from the bonds of spatial discretization, they open the door to a new class of PDE solvers that are robust to bad geometry, scalable to extremely large scenes, and progressive in their solution evaluation. Thank you.